Drawing rotations in the coordinate plane, we're at 9.3b, which means we have five previous videos for Chapter 9 that you could become lost or confused if you haven't seen them. In 9.3a, we learned to draw a rotation around a point P by the measure of a given angle using segments and corresponding rays and lengths. If the angle of rotation in a coordinate plane is not a multiple of 90 degrees, we can use sine and cosine ratios to find the coordinates of the image. And the center of rotation is called a fixed point because when a figure rotates around it, it doesn't move. And the center of rotation can be inside, on, or outside the pre-image. And a rotation is an isometry. The image is congruent to the pre-image. The size and shape don't change, but the orientation does. So for rotations in the coordinate plane by 90 degrees about the origin counterclockwise, take a look at this diagram. We have this blue point P and its coordinates X and Y are at a 4 for X and a 2 for Y. If we rotate this by 90 degrees about the origin counterclockwise, we're going to be at P prime over here and our coordinates are going to be a negative 2, 4. And if you look, that's the inverse of this y value and our x value, see? We went from having a 2 for y to a negative 2, and then our 4 went over here, see? So we use the inverse of the y value for our x value, okay? If we want to rotate by 180 degrees about the origin counterclockwise, going 180 degrees, we're going to go from p, which is at 4, 2, to p prime, which is at negative 4, negative 2. So we have the inverse of x and the inverse of y when we rotate it 180 degrees about the origin counterclockwise. Okay. Negative angle measures are sometimes used to represent clockwise rotations. So we've been talking about counterclockwise rotations a rotation of 40, negative 45 degrees means a clockwise rotation of 45 degrees. Now we can make a rotation ruler by cutting an angle out of a piece of paper and using a ruler and compass to mark it at regular intervals. So the intervals, if you use the spacing of grid paper, it's smarter because then it'll match the paper you're doing for your work. So along the bottom here, we make a 60 degree angle and we mark it the same units as our graph paper. Then we can take a compass, pardon me, and we just make our arcs keeping the point right here at this vertex and we keep moving our compass bigger and bigger so that we can make all the arcs like that. That's going to give us the same intervals on this side of our rotation ruler, okay? So we can make rulers for typical angle measures like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and so on. And we can use them to rotate a figure by that given angle. So I've made a 60, 45, and 30 degree rotation ruler we're going to use the 60 degree one and this is what we do. I made them different colors so that if I use them again I know oh the red one's 30 degrees and you know the blue one is 60 degrees so I can grab them quicker. So if we want to rotate this blue triangle 60 degrees counterclockwise what we do is we take our rotation ruler and we line it up along this bottom right here okay because we're going to rotate this line 60 degrees, then we're going to rotate this segment 60 degrees, okay? So segments, all right? So I line it up along that line, and we can see that it's at two units, isn't it? Right here, okay? See that? On the other side right here, we draw the line to the two units. So now I've got this pink line here, see? Now to rotate this segment, I line up my 60 degrees right here, and we see that it's three units. So I'm going to make a pink line going three units to right here. So 
now I have this one. Then all we have to do is connect the segments and we've got our triangle rotated 60 degrees counterclockwise, see? And this is what it would look like on a coordinate plane, okay? You just line up the bottom of the rotation ruler with the pre-image and draw corresponding segments. We use a straight edge to draw the segment to close the figure. See? All right? And drawing s rotations in the coordinate plane, we can rotate triangle ABC, this blue one, with the vertices A, B, and C by 90 degrees about the origin counterclockwise. And the rotation is going to go from the XY values to the inverse of Y, X. So we're, we're going to swap their places for the rotation, and we're going to make the Y value the inverse. So for A, we have a 2, negative 1. Well, this negative 1 is going to go into the X values place as the inverse, so it's going to be a positive 1. And then we take the 2X value and give it to the Y. So now we have a 1, 2. Do the same thing for B. We've got a 4 and a 1. The inverse of this positive 1 is a negative 1. And we put the x values over here. So now we have negative 1 for x and 4 for y. We do the same thing for 3. We end up with a negative 3, 3. And we graph the pre-image in the image. And we've got our pink image here. OK? When all vertices of a figure are rotated around the center of rotation by the same angle, points that are farther from the center of rotation move a greater distance than the points that are closer to the center of rotation. So we have these four children that are holding hands, and they're going to rotate around a pole. And the farther away a child is from the center of rotation, the farther they'll have to run around. This poor little guy, this fourth guy in the yellow shirt, is going to have to run a lot farther than this first guy. See? A Ferris wheel has a radius of 67.5 meters and takes 30 minutes to make a complete rotation. So here's the radius. Okay, so that's going to be the Ferris wheel. So a car starts at position 67.50 for the X and Y. What are the coordinates of the car's location after five minutes? Well, it told us that 30 minutes is a complete rotation. So five minutes would be a one-sixth rotation. We find the angle of rotation, and 5 minutes is 5 over 30, or 5 thirtieths, which reduces to 1 sixth of a complete rotation. And 1 sixth of 360 degrees, which is the degrees of a circle, would be 60 degrees. 5 minutes went by, and 30 minutes for one rotation, so we had 5 thirtieths, which simplified to 1 sixth. We draw a right triangle to represent the car's location, x, y, right here, after a rotation of 60 degrees about the origin, right here. We use the cosine ratio to find the x coordinate. So remember using your SOHCAHTOA. So the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to x over 67.5. That would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so we'd have x over 67.5 and using our calculator we find 67.5 cosine of 60 degrees is approximately 33.8 solving for x then we use the sine ratio to find the y coordinate and the sine of 60 degrees would be y over 67.5 that would be the opposite over the hypotenuse okay so katoa so using our calculator, y equals 67.5 sine of 60 degrees is approximately 58.5. Okay, we're solving for y. So the car's location after five minutes, after a one-sixth turn, is approximately 33.8 for x and 58.5 for y. See? So we found the location, all right? Our next lesson is going to be compositions of transformations and glide reflections. Then we're going to do 9.5, starting with symmetry, and then solids of revolution. Okay? So you can try making yourself a rotation ruler. Just make the angle on the corner of the paper. Mark it the same units as your graph paper that you use. Make the arcs and 
mark which measurement it is. And then you can use it to do rotations clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay? All right. So that's it. We're going to be moving on to 9.4. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.